Hello everyone and welcome back to the dork side. I am the dork in the road and today it's a sad day because today I think it's time to sell my Honda CRF 250L. That's right everyone, I am the dork in the road and I want to be your internet riding buddy so please consider subscribing and don't forget to turn on those notifications so that you know when I post awesome new content just like this. I'm outside in my driveway and I'm out here because I am peeling all the dork in the road stickers off of the CRF 250L and, and going through the final touches I need to do before I put it on the market. So I think the time has come to sell this motorcycle and it is sad but unfortunately also probably necessary. So I just thought while I was working on that I would maybe talk you through why I'm selling it and um, explain my reasoning and how we ended up at this point. Just know first of all that uh, I don't want to sell it. It's not that this motorcycle has disappointed me or that I don't like it anymore. There's nothing wrong with it. Very capable, fun, easy to ride motorcycle. I've gushed about it for years, ridden it for years. Um, it was a great first dual sport for me. I wish it had been my first bike, but recent changes including upgrading to my DRZ and my daughter getting her own DRZ 125L have led to the CRF 250L sitting in the garage a lot and frankly it's too nice and good of a bike for it to sit and never get ridden and so um, I finally made the decision I think that I'm gonna have to sell it. So first to go is, and I've already started as you can see because now it says dork in the awesome vinyl my wife cut me for the swing arm that's gotta go. Can't have anybody out there riding this bike impersonating dork in the road so I'm gonna scrape this off the swing arm with my handy dandy razor blade. So a brief history for those of you that haven't seen every single video on the channel and you're like why the hell are you selling such a great bike? Well so I started on it, like I said, it was my first dual sport. I've ridden it tons, uh, trail riding, in the woods, on the highway, on the freeway. I got videos of all that stuff. Um, and it's been a great bike for me. But a few months ago, I decided to take the plunge and try out a little bit bigger dual sport. So I ended up getting a DRZ 400. There was a whole question of whether I would get the 450L or the DRZ. I'm a Honda guy, so it was a really tough decision, but I ended up going with the DRZ. And I've been riding it a lot more than the CRF lately and the plan was when I got the DRZ that my daughter would take over the 250L. She really wanted to ride it. She's 13. Um, she's plenty tall. She's about 5'6 I think now. And she can get her feet down and everything. So that was the plan for a while but uh, as you may have seen in several videos it didn't go smoothly and ultimately we made the decision that probably this bike while the power was good um, it was easy to ride because it's easy to shift and all of that all of that was fine it's just a little heavy and just a little tall for her so anytime it started to tip she would drop it and um, it just really hurt her confidence and so she wasn't she wasn't having fun and getting out and doing the type of riding Anyway, she wasn't getting out and having fun uh, and doing the types of riding that we were enjoying when she had her 110. So, um, on a whim, I went out and I found her a DRZ 125 and we went and bought that. You can see that in the video of her fixing the CRF 250 after she dropped it. So that presented an interesting financial dilemma because I obviously didn't have the money to just go plunk down and spend $2,500 on a DRZ 125 out of my pocket. So um, I ended up putting the DRZ in a credit card because I got it cheap, but I need to pay that credit card off. And so here's the crux of the decision. If you're really wondering like, why are you selling this great bike? Here's why, because I have to financially. And the thing is, I wanted my daughter to be able to ride this bike, but she can't. And so the choice then becomes ride with my daughter or keep the CRF 250L in the garage unridden for sentimental reasons. And if I have to pick between basically anything and riding with my daughter, I'm gonna pick riding with my daughter. So as much as I love this bike and don't wanna see it gone, if by selling it, I get to ride with my kid and she gets to ride a bike that she's confident on and can grow on and enjoy, then then that's worth it to me. So that's why we're selling it. Not because anything's wrong with it, but because too many bikes in the garage and because frankly, I need the money to pay out the DRZ. 100% honesty. I'm gonna have to get in here with some cleaner and get this goo off the swing arm. This Cricut vinyl, man, it sticks all right. It's gonna take more cleaning than I was anticipating. That, clean, that chain needs a once over. Pretty bad. This one hurts. First sticker I ever put on a bike, I think. So that's kind of the, the gist, the decision-making process behind it. So if you know anyone, sorry, Giant Loop, don't worry, there's lots of Giant Loop stickers on my other bikes. If you're local, if you're in the Pacific Northwest and you want to find yourself a well-loved and 
semi-gently used on the CRF 250L with less than 3,000 miles on it. Uh, hit me up. Send me an email at dork at dorkintheroad.com. I would love, love, love to see this bike go to someone who can appreciate its history and that will treat it in the way that it needs to be treated. And by that I mean ride the piss out of it and take it exploring in all the places where it belongs because that's what this bike is designed to do and that's what it's been for me. So I'd love to see it be that for someone else. It's got a few dents and dings here and there. You know, it's like I said, well loved. So the handguards, they're a little scratched up from my daughter dropping it a few times. Brand new oil filter cover, that's fantastic, right? I mean, honestly, it's not that often you get the opportunity to buy a motorcycle whose entire history is on tape. So every time I've dropped this bike, and it has been dropped a few times, is on a YouTube video. It's right here on this channel. You can see the whole history. Don't usually get that. Wouldn't it be nice if you did? So you'll know I'm not lying when I tell you why there's oil on the skid plate. It's because when my daughter changed the oil filter cover, she uh, spilled a bunch. Not because there's some oil leak I'm trying to hide from you. You know, you also get a very clean chain, theoretically. So she's a little rough around the edges, but well-worn, well-loved, seasoned really, is what you could call it. Uh, it's broken in, well broken in. So it's sad. I'm sad to see it go. I'm not, I'm not excited to be making this video. I'm not excited about all the traffic in my neighborhood while I'm trying to film. But I am excited about the possibility of somebody awesome who knows and loves and appreciates this motorcycle being able to continue knowing and loving and appreciating it for a long time. So this isn't supposed to be like a sales pitch necessarily, but dork at dorkintheroad.com if you're at all interested in local. 4500 I think is what I'm gonna put it up for. What do you think? Fair price. It's a little above book, but it's the PNW premium. That's how it works around here with dual sports. Oh, sad. I miss this thing. So fun. Learned so much on it. So tell me in the comments, what was the hardest motorcycle to sell that you ever sold? This is gonna be the toughest one so far. I can tell you that. I'm not looking forward to it. It's seriously, the only thing that pushes me over is knowing that by selling this, I get to keep riding with my daughter. And that's important and awesome, so look forward to that. So if you have any questions, comments, you want to yell at me and tell me that my channel is going to go down the toilet once I sell this, uh, I would do that in the comments below. I want to thank all of you that supported and watched all the videos I made on this bike over the years. Uh, and I want to give a big shout out to my patrons and channel members. Thank you for your support. And also, don't forget to check out dorkintheroad.com for all of your dorky motorcycling needs. It's new and awesome. But for now, and as always, I just want to say, Thank you very much for watching, and please, please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Thank you. Excellent! Oh, I'm so old, you know, my knees is, well, it's not awesome.